So I just started filming this video and realized the record button wasn't hit. So let's redo it all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me on here on Instagram as ZA Reptiles. And today we're going to talk about which reptiles are illegal to keep in New York State. So I get this from lots of different sides, from work, people telling me about animals that they have that are illegal. People ask me why I don't have certain animals for education programs because they're illegal. Why I don't have my dream species because it's illegal. So we're going to talk about what's illegal. So New York State specifically, the laws are a little confusing and they can be a little hard to find. I've looked into this a lot over the past couple of years because of several species that I wanted to keep or were curious about. So let's kind of put it in, you know, I might not cover every reptile in this video, but this should give you, if you are a New York resident or you're just curious, a pretty good start on what's, what you can't own here. So first and foremost, I want to say if you are a New York keeper, please try to abide by the rules that are set. I know there are a lot of keepers currently working with like high up official people to try to get some sort of permitting system or something so that we can have some more of the current illegal species. So keeping them responsibly, therefore government lets us have them type of thing, you know. So please try to respect the rules that are currently in place so that the keepers that are currently working to get this system going, you know, they're backed by what looks like a very responsible community that can handle a permitting system. Okay, so before we get into like the stuff that you have to really search to find we're going to start with just the very general this is really easy this is the thing i have to deal with the general this is what i have to constantly deal with at work at the nature center you cannot own native wildlife period but we're talking specifically about reptiles so you cannot own new york native reptiles now i believe there are several reasons for this one being you know you don't want to be taking from the wild population especially the turtles turtles are not doing very hot out there so we don't want to pull from their wild populations especially if you happen to pull a female one female being pulled from that population can be very detrimental to the ongoing i feel like i've said population like 5,000 times but the ongoing population out there in the wild pull one female there's one less female to reproduce hurting the population so what kind of reptiles do we have here in New York? Well, luckily we don't really have that much in the way of lizards, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, we do have a couple lizards. I'm not gonna get into that though because they aren't specifically around here. That's not something I have to deal with. Um, turtles, turtles are the main one. And the biggest one I see all the time is painted turtles. Please, if you are a New York resident, don't bring home any turtles you find, but don't bring home painted turtles. Those are one of the most common ones we see in New York. That's the one I hear about 99% of the time at work is people telling me they have a painted turtle and they got the painted turtle outside. They rescued it from the side of the road, brought it home and kept it. No, that is called kidnapping, not rescuing. So painted turtles, common snapping turtles. This one kills me. I love common snapping turtles. I I'll take an alligator snapping turtle instead. In fact, I almost had one and my boyfriend told me no. So that's why I don't have him right now. But common snapping turtles, illegal. They are native here, okay? Uh, wood turtles, our wood turtle at work was actually one that was kidnapped as a baby from the side of the road. Um, and this is where it's a problem. If you can't ID the turtles that you are kidnapping, rescuing, taking from the side of the road and bringing home, you can't give them proper care because even if you do your research, you're researching the wrong turtle. So the wood turtle that we have was taken and kept as a snapping turtle because of course everyone sees a turtle and 99% of the time they think it's a snapping turtle. So they kept him in a fully aquatic setup like a snapper 
and yeah so what turtles um eastern box turtles no no um there are many other box turtles though don't be discouraged if you want a box turtle like maybe you're like me you don't really you know aquatic turtles aren't your thing more of a turtle or a tortoise person box turtles are kind of like the happy medium so if i ever got a turtle for my education programs it would be a box turtle besides like an alligator snapper um spotted turtles spotted turtles are a big one please if you find a spotted turtle do not take it home they need all of the wild individuals that they can get please 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 i cannot say this enough please if you find a spotted turtle do not take it home with you same goes for a blandings turtle one of the most unknown species in new york blanding turtles do not do well in the wild they don't breed and reproduce until they're about 20 21 22 somewhere around there so they have to make it two decades surviving not getting hit by cars before they can reproduce and even then they don't have that many eggs so it's amazing honestly that we still have blanding turtles out there so if you find a blandings turtle absolutely do not take it home there are many people, many Head Start programs trying to save the species. Blanding turtles are a no-no. Snakes, common garters, that's a no-no, we have those. Um, decays, oh, black rat snakes, that one makes me upset. I would love a black rat snake, but they are a New York native, so we cannot own them. And to finish up with the native animals, obviously we have a lot more native reptiles than what I'm naming. I'm just naming the most common ones. Um, so the next one, the last one I'm going to mention for natives, this one also makes me upset, is the eastern hognose. I love hognose snakes. You guys should know this by now. I've got one of my dream snakes, which is Rumpel, my tricolored hognose. I've got Penelope, my western hognose, who's an absolute dream. I love her to death. She's so cute. Eastern hognoses we cannot have because they are a native animal. And I think they are so pretty. I would love an eastern. Can't have them. Okay, so you get the gist. Can't have native wildlife. Can't do it. Um, if you have native wildlife currently and you're thinking, oh, shit, do not go release it outside because that is also illegal. So it's kind of like this because it's illegal to take them and keep them. But once you have them, it's illegal to release them because who knows what kind of diseases or bacteria or whatever they pick up in captivity and take it back out to the wild. And then they're infecting those that are still in the wild. Other thing that could happen. This turtle has been in your care. It now is used to being provided for. Maybe isn't gonna be good at providing for itself if you put it back out in the wild. Um, you can't really call any animal shelters or anything because they can't rehome them out because it's illegal to own them. So you're kind of stuck with it making the best of the situation. Unless you can find a nature center, a zoo, somebody that can take it or has the proper permits for it um other than that not much you can do it's kind of a tricky situation so to close out the native wildlife stuff i want to talk about whether i disagree or agree with it so i agree with it i know a lot of people in a lot of states they think it's stupid no 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 blah 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 let me own the turtle blah 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 I agree with us not being able to own native wildlife as much as it kills me that I can't have a black rat snake or an eastern hognose or common snapper. I agree with it 100%. How else are we going to really have control over helping our wild populations if people are going out and taking them and keeping them as pets? So moving off of native wildlife, we're going to talk more about the other reptiles that aren't New York native that we can't own. Every state, kind of, sort of, almost every state, has their list of animals you can't keep. And I find that New York lists some pretty common ones that a lot of states list, but then there are some that just make me very upset. So, first and foremost, I mentioned education earlier in the snakes. We'll start there. Snakes that routinely get over 
10 feet, illegal. So anacondas, Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, you can't own them here. Now, do I agree with this or disagree with this? Little bit in between. So I agree with it because I feel like most people should not have these snakes because of the room that they need and most of the time don't get. So I feel like a lot of people will not provide a 10 foot long enclosure for this big snake. And it's a shame because you can really create an amazing setup for these snakes. But a lot of people try to keep them in a little bit too small setups. Now I disagree with it because for those that would provide an amazing setup and care for them, now they cannot have them. I'm not so sure that this rule was passed because of a worry of them becoming invasive because with our winters it's pretty much impossible that they would become invasive. They would not know how to survive our winters like our native snakes would. So in a sense I am happy they're illegal because I know most people would not keep them as good as they possibly could. It's just like a cool, hey look I have a big snake type of thing. Not a let me provide a whole room for this animal and give it a fully naturalistic setup that's going to take up my whole house because this snake is like 15 feet long type of thing, you know? Unfortunately this does include dwarf reticulated pythons. I've looked into it. Other people have asked the DEC about it. So I thought maybe I could get around it by having a dwarf reticulated python for education programs and apparently a reticulated python is a reticulated python and it's just a no-no. There's no gray area, it's just no. So no dwarfs, no super dwarfs. Can't, can't get around it. Okay, so I actually have the list up here, like the actual document that lists them, so this is very legitimate. So let me go down to the snake part. Okay, so just kind of a full list. Australian python, Indian python, Burmese python, reticulated python, northern African python, and south southern African python. Okay. Um, crocodilians? All no no. There's no species, no specific species you can have. Crocodilians. Which, again, most people I feel like would not keep them in, they'd keep them in subpar conditions. And it's an animal that shouldn't really be easily available to a lot of people. So this is a rule that I am okay with. And it'd be nice if they, again, could provide a permitting system for those who are doing like education programs so that we do have access to those animals, but most of the general public does not. So that would be nice if they could get those permitting systems in place because there are some people that would care for them really amazingly. And there's other people that just want a crocodile, say so they have a crocodile. And yeah, that poor crocodile. Okay. Um, many monitors, it's mostly the bigger ones, the water monitors. Um, and this is where I start to get sad. So let me read this off. Common water monitor, Nile monitor, white throat monitor, black throat monitor, crocodile monitor, and Komodo dragon. These are all no-nos. Again, not really upset about it. These are huge monitors. You know, you need a lot of space for them. Most people aren't keeping these species anyway, so it's not really, it really doesn't affect us too much up here. Now, how does this upset me, though, is amongst the monitors we can't keep are black dragons. And black dragons, for the longest time, and still are, but I had to kind of switch out my dream animals because I can't have a black dragon. Black dragons, for the longest time, were my dream lizard. And they're illegal. We cannot have them here. And that's one of the ones where it's not really on the list, but they are included. They're illegal. You can't have them here, which is very unfortunate because they are an absolute dream of mine. I would love, love, love to have a black dragon so badly, and I cannot. Okay, moving down. Uh, here's more of the big snakes, you know, your anacondas. So your green anaconda, yellow anaconda, Benny and Benny? Anaconda, is that what it is? And Deshaun Seas Anaconda. I haven't heard of these other than green and yellow, so if I pronounce these wrong, I'm sorry, just anacondas in general. You can't have anacondas. But we covered that already. There's the pythons, we covered that. Okay, 
So those are kind of the reptiles that like they're dangerous but they're not really dangerous but they're dangerous. They're more so banned I think just because they're considered dangerous. You know they wouldn't survive our winters so they won't become invasive. That's not a problem. It's the fact that they are considered dangerous. So going on for that the most dangerous venomous snakes. Well venomous reptiles in general you can't have. So all reptiles that are venomous by nature including but not limited to the following species within the families or subspecies. Now I do want to say rear fanged venomous snakes seem to be an exception. They seem to be okay. Again I have hog noses. Those are totally legal. I believe false water cobras are legal because I've looked into it and it seems that they are totally legal. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen mangroves at reptile expos. So I'm pretty sure rear fanged venomous snakes are okay for New York. Don't quote me on that. If you're looking at just like a hog nose, go for it. Totally legal. So they're more, more so talking about like the legit venomous species. So to give you an example of some, vipers, American dwarf garter snakes, Montpelier snake, um, your colubrids, boom slang, um, twig snake, Kirtland's bird snake, Cape bird snake or twig snake, um, and then we move down to our tiger keelback, a redneck keelback, and then going down to our racers, uh, Patagonian racer, Lich, Lichtenstein's racer, and then the unfortunate part, your venomous lizards, your beaded lizards, and your gila monsters. Which is very unfortunate because I'd also love to have one of those. So, I cannot. So, I was waiting to mention a couple other New York natives until I got to this part. So, venomous slash New York natives. So, we have the eastern Massasagua, we've got copperheads, rattlesnakes. So, again, illegal for more than one reason. Native and they're venomous. Now they do say there are licenses and permitting, but um, it's a lie. So last I knew and all the people I've talked to and talked to in Facebook groups, you know, New York Facebook groups, um, as much as they say and advertise there's permitting and licenses, they don't give anything to anybody at all. So that's why there's currently a group of reptile keepers trying to work to get something in place. And I know they were like really going at it, making progress before COVID hit. I don't really know what the status of, is of it now, but I know it's something that they're trying to get done for the reptile keepers of New York. So keep that in mind when you're trying to make your uh, decisions, make some good responsible ones that make us look good as a community so that we can move in the right direction and I can have a black dragon please and thank you. So again, that wasn't like a full, total, complete list of all the species that you can't have in New York, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what we can't have in New York. So whether you're curious or you know you live in New York, now you kind of know where you can go with your reptile keeping, what animals you can look at and explore, what animals you should just stick to when you're going herping and not bring home with you. So hopefully this helps some of you if you are a New York resident um, or maybe you're looking to move to New York and you're curious what you can and can't have. Hopefully this helps you. Um, I recommend joining some New York reptile groups if you want to know more because a lot of people have been in this hobby a lot longer than I have and have done more research than I have on this topic um, and they know pretty well what you can and cannot have. So definitely join some groups if you are looking for more details or if I didn't mention a species that you're kind of questioning definitely head there because it is really hard to find this information online. It's not really easily accessible. So a lot of people that have found it, you know, they've got the links and they can give them to you. So, so that's going to wrap it up for today. Let me know what reptile laws your state has because some of them are like really lenient and some of them are like way more strict than New York is. So if your state has reptile laws, let me know in the comments below because I'm always really curious. And as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!